The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 232. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have an amazing lady on the show today. She is a music producer, and I'm just really glad to have her on so she can share her story with us. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Jane Louie. Jane, how are you today? Maybe I, maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Sure. Hi. Um, thanks for having me. It's been a crazy day for us also, but it, I've just been nonstop working uh, a whole lot on my fourth album. Currently, I am doing some work for a musical that is being written and excited to head to Comic-Con because I'm a nerd at heart too this summer. And uh, I am a musician. Uh, I am an actor and I kind of have to wear many different hats, I think, as we all do in uh, our own industry, whatever that may be. And yeah, I'm just glad to be talking about this today. Important issue. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what's your cultural background? So I am Cantonese. I'm from Hong Kong. I grew up there and my mom and dad are both, they were both there. So I am an immigrant myself. Cool. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Jane, what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? I think my favorite thing would be that it's not so much a self-confidence, but it, of course, has everything to do with your inner self, that the longest distance that we have to achieve in life is the 18 inches between your head and your heart. And from that, I always kind of check in with myself uh, whenever I have decisions to make, when I think about what I want to say to my friends or even in any given situation where any kind of conversation, substantial or not, is, is, is happening in the moment where I go, okay, what can I contribute to this moment without feeling like I am stifling myself, but also keeping an open mind to my own heart, my own head, as well as their own heart, their own head. Yeah, I like that quote a lot. It, it seems to apply in every single situation. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that quote. And, you know, I agree, you know, sometimes, you know, we need both our head and our heart to think of the things we do and, you know, how we proceed in our lives and in our journey. So, you know, I think it has everything to do with self-confidence because it's really about inner work and sometimes following our heart and also, you know, following our head at the same time. So, yeah, great stuff. And in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? I think self-confidence is, first of all, something that is lifelong because I think we're constantly discovering how else we can be more confident in ourselves. And we go through phases of some things kind of come in waves. They You have to be more self-confident about your career. You have to be self-confident about your kind of your own body. Like as women, we are constantly dealing, dealing with having to censor ourselves people thinking that we're not supposed to be good at something. So why are we, you know, it's like there are constantly things um, I feel like that are, that are both in our own lives as well as uh, in our circles and as a trend that bring us, bring our, to our attention um, in the world that we can be constantly self-confident about and should kind of work on. And it's a matter of being able to be honest with ourselves without, what would be the word, without pandering to societal conditions, conditioning. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, you know, especially as, you know, growing up as an Asian woman, it's so challenging sometimes to um, be your own person when there's so many like things coming at us, right? Maybe our family yeah. telling us what to do or society yeah. kind of brainwashes us just to get married. You know, it's, it's a battle, but, you know, it's a battle that we can win. We always, um, we always have it inside us to be stronger and keep going. And, like you said, it's a lifelong journey, but we just get better and better the more we're aware of our surroundings and the more we're, we are aware of ourselves. So yeah, great definition. And Jane, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? First of all, I, ca I cannot vouch for the fact that I am fully self-confident either, you know, because I am still learning every step of the way. I would say just to like have that consciousness in my head to uh, kind of be honest with myself and, and 
hence the world around me. Life before that feeling anyway is very quiet. <laughs> and in a in a way that's probably, you know, I was very much a chameleon. In fact, that's a, been a big thing in the last, I would say, five years of my life of turning around is before... I think we. I personally grew up in a household that love, the, the definition of love is such that if you can become the thing that my parents wanted me to be, then I will receive love. It was very simple and it worked. And it's a very common story, unfortunately. And so a lot of friends around me were doing the same thing, where as long as you just do what they say, become the thing that, you know, they want you to without really understanding why. It's really very much performance-based family uh, situation. Then it, it's, it works where they, you are loved, you are cherished, and you are honored. You are kind of brought up in public settings where, you know, they talk about you, proud of you, but it's a, it's a, smoke it's kind of all smokes and mirrors for their own ego it's it's a they want to be they want to have something that they can tell the world that they're they're super excited about that it's about in the end it's it's kind of narcissistic because it's it's not about what the person wants it's about what they want for you and i know it's all very good intentions it's all a part of parenting i'm sure if i become a parent i would do that someday kind of without me even knowing so and i and i hope to not kind of go too far left field into that so that it's about me because i i would of course want my children to um do what they want to do so before that it was very much i like i became this person that knew very well how to become the thing that i think people want me to be without them ever having to tell me, without them ever having to force me. Uh, I am so observant about that, that I started doing that in personal relationships, romantic relationships, where I kind of lose myself in it. And it's that, you know, the pop songs I'll talk about, I will do anything for you, I will be, I will be this for you, I, I'm happy to shut myself up for you, you know. And, it, and it's very dangerous, and it creates bad habits, and you, are, you have no idea who you are. And so that, I can honestly say, was me. Was me. Just, I mean, five years ago, I was a completely different person. And it was very turbulent. It became um, very turbulent after a while because I had this cycle where every five years, I would walk out of friendships, personal relationships, because I didn't understand why I lost myself. Like, where did I go? I would just become this thing that people wanted me to be. And so... It was actually a time where I decidedly knew that something was 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 weird because this was my cycle. So I would, took on a lot of therapy. I really went into really hard work to kind of deconstruct what was happening to me, dealing with a lot of childhood issues, traumas from the past, and then kind of reconstruct how I'd like to be, which is a very blanketed way of describing what happened but it's a lot of detail-oriented psychological deconstruction <laughs> well thanks for sharing that and i know it's something that we all go through right we're trying to receive, yeah trying to receive that love for from your parents you know being the obedient daughter or being the obedient sister or wife or you know it, it's something that most asian women deal with and you know i'm glad you were able to do the work like do do the work for yourself to deconstruct so you can reconstruct on who you want to be and you know with that realization what's your life been like now i am not like i have never felt so able to speak up and, and it's weird um it's a very strange feeling to know that you're in a room people are saying things that you don't agree with and you can say think things back at them and it, they can both live in the same room like it's okay that you completely disagree. It's it, th there is enough room in the world for it all to to exist. And I don't think I understood that before. I mean, you know, you you, you talk about coexist and religions existing, but you don't actually apply that to everyday details of your life. Disagreeing on how to, you know cook something, even as, as simple as that. You know, what kind of activities do you want to do right now? How do you feel? about your health like what's the best way to go about your diet or just small things and it it enables me then to both be honest with myself and have a 
absolutely open mind to what other people are feeling and have adult conversations and with thick skin where you're not feeling defensive, where you don't have the need to feel emotional about something that perhaps isn't a part of your life, but is a part of the world. I don't know if that makes sense, like political issues. Like there are peaceful ways of discussing things that I never found before. And it's a very strange feeling to know that I'm still today learning that voice as I discover new things to have opinions about. You know, I'm not a parent yet, but I need to develop a, an opinion about how to parent. And I don't know what that is. And in time, I need to have a strong voice in that, even if it's just that I don't know, you know, and I need to be open mind to listening to other people talk about how they parent, just stuff like that. And it's a weird feeling to know that as I become more confident, I get pushback as an, an Asian female. And perhaps not so much the Asian part. I don't know. I, you know, I, these, these are unquantifiable, and that's what makes this very difficult too. But I think particularly the female part, anyway, has something to do with it, where they they're confused. They they get weirded out when I have a really strong opinion. And my particular example would be in music production because that's my field, and I have a very strong voice in music production. And when I get pushback from men in particular. I can I can see the discomfort. They can't look at me like they like they, they suddenly can't have eye contact. Like I'm I, and I'm and I'm very diplomatic when I say my my thoughts. But even then, it's a uh, it's not brotherhood for them, and so it's not as easy for them to feel awkward. I don't even want to say threatened because it's I don't I don't think they feel threatened. Yeah, um, I, I I don't think they'll feel threatened. I think they're just not you know, they're not used to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um and so it's really fascinating to watch these new reactions around me. Awesome. And it and it's kind of fun too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're just not used to it and I think it's just getting used to that they'll realize, you know, it's okay. <laughs> you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they're going to have to learn to deal with it in the end. So totally. so Thanks for sharing that. And it's great that you can be, you're able to, you know, just voice your opinions regardless of other people's opinions. And, you know, to the lo woman who's listening to your episode, what would be that one tip you would give to her about self-confidence? Be patient with yourself. Uh, have compassion with yourself. I think that's, if anything, the most important. And I know a lot of times you want to say something and you feel if you don't, then you would be doing something a disservice. And I completely understand that and, and by all means. But there, even when you are about to speak out, I mean, I've made this mistake myself where there is a time and space to speak out and then there's a time and space to not. And and that's, that's not really a female thing. That's more just a human thing as well. But as females growing into self-confidence, sometimes we can be hard on, our, hard on ourselves. Like if I don't, then it would mean X, Y, Z. If I do, it would mean X, Y, Z. Either way. Be kind uh, to yourself because I forget to be my own best friend most of the time. And I think that's really important. Thanks for sharing that. I think that's something we all have to remind ourselves. We have to be our own best friend because self-sabotaging and self-punishment, you know, we're so good at it that we forget so that good. <laughs> we have to learn to be kind to ourselves. So, you know, I can totally resonate with you because I still do that and have to like kind of stop and think, whoa, 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 you know, yeah. be nice, right? Like, shut up, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. tell you, yeah, why are you saying these things to yourself? T totally. I yeah. mean, it's something we all go through. So thanks for sharing that. And if our listeners want to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, I am on YouTube uh, with a Louie Land channel, L U I E L A N D, and I'm also at janelouie.com, and that last name spells L U I. Mm -hmm. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Jane, you can also head on over to thetowofselfconfidence.com and search for Jane's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I really just want to thank Jane for taking the time to share her story and tips with us. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It was an honor to have you on the show. It was a lot of fun and, you know, got some, some tips and stuff that our listeners will definitely um, thank you for. So listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. 
Visit our website at thetowofselfconfidence.com to check out cool resources, blog articles, show recaps, and so much more. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.